Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. And this one has to do with antennas versus apartments. Okay, now, this is from Paul. Uh, he doesn't give his call sign in here. He says, love your videos. I'm in a second story apartment with a balcony. That's very important. It's like a Faraday cage inside, and none of my antennas work on it. It's framed with aluminum, can't be opened. I think an MFJ-1788 would be the answer. The MFJ-1788 is their loop, magnetic loop antenna. Now, I know there are a lot of people who would call that a small HF loop, but the whole world calls it a magnetic loop, and I can see why. So anyway, this is a very nice Magloop antenna. I have one of them. I've used it. It's about equivalent to a dipole. Oddly enough, even though it's quite small physically, it works very well. Okay. Now, the problem with the Magloop, of course, is that the tuning is touchy. Okay. And you've got to every, if you tune more than a few kilohertz off of where you are in the band, you can use the buttons on it. This is the controller right here. And you attach the antenna here, the transmitter here, your ground here, your power here, which is 9 to 15 volts DC. Okay, and it's very important, incredibly important, that this be floating. The negative cannot be attached to ground. They will send you with this a wall wart that you can plug in and attach in here. You will not be able to power this with a regular power supply. Now, if you're out in the field and you want to use this, you can use a separate battery, separate from your radio battery, to plug into here and not make any other ground connections or anything. The reason for that is because the way it makes the antenna tune one way is to make the voltage positive and to tune the other way makes the voltage negative so that the motor runs in the other direction. Now we've got SWR meter, power on, range, high, low, lamp, so on. That's just for the meter. Now up and down are for fine tuning and auto band select up and down. Now what you will do with this is semi-automatic band selection and you'll get used to this after you've used it for a while. I did. If you are uh, below the frequency you're now operating at, you can hold the uh, key down, push the up, and it will find a point and stop. Okay, and then you can use the slow tune, which are just push buttons. Okay, these actually go in and stay in. Okay, so it takes a little while to get used to operating this thing. But I got to tell you, this is about the only mag loop antenna I've seen that you can truly operate remotely. Now, there are others like the Chameleon uh, F loop that you can get a remote tuner for. It's sort of remote, okay, but it needs ex its own cables out there and it's got the, the motor that tunes it back and forth. So there are lots of different ways of doing it. Now the MFJ antenna runs around $700. It's not cheap. And with the price of goods going up, th that price has gone up too. There's another option you can look at. It's called Precise RF. Okay, now, these go from relatively inexpensive, $535, to a bunch more expensive to do remote control and auto-tuning, and then even more expensive, $3,000, to go QRO, go with much higher power. Okay, now, the MFJ and antenna will handle 100 watts easily. Some of these others, like this one right here, is 45 watts PEP. This one, 45 watts. This one will do a 1,000 watts PEP, okay? 
And this is a new model that they have. DX Engineering speaks highly of them because uh, I have spoken to them about it. So there are all kinds of mag loops. Now, if you get a mag loop like the F mount and you don't pay the extra money for the uh, tuner on the thing, you're going to have to put your radio right next to the antenna and tune that antenna as you move around on the band, okay? It's one of those antennas that will cover all bands, all frequencies, but only one at a time. So it's not like a multi-band trapped antenna, which you don't have to do anything to the antenna to move to another band. You have to do something in the antenna to move to another band. Can this be made to work? Yes. Now, I want to point something out on the whiteboard here. I, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, here's your balcony. Now, you've got an apartment next door that has a balcony. Okay, and you've got a wall coming down inside. There's a wall coming down inside here. Okay, and you've got a table set up here that you're operating on. What do you do with the antenna? Well, if you look at a mag loop antenna from the top, the direction of propagation is off the ends. Okay, off the ends. So you don't want to put the thing up like this because it's just banging into the concrete right there. So you want to turn it and I don't know if I can draw the appropriate oval. You want to turn it so that the looking down from the top, that's the direction of rotation. Now there is another thing that you can do. Okay, uh, I'm assuming that you've got a railing of some sort here. If they don't, a duck to OSHA. Anyway, there's a railing or something like this. You can mount the antenna in such a way that it lays flat. So it's a circle like this. So if you look at the uh, building here, you've got your railing here, and you've got the thing out here in a horizontal loop. Okay, This will give you equal propagation in, in all directions. So you can experiment with that mounting. Again, you've got to be near it in order to tune it. The tuning on these antennas is such that the variation in temperature in the antenna between morning and afternoon can be enough that if it was tuned in the morning, it won't be in the afternoon. You'll have to retune it. Not by much, but you will have to retune it. So you can't just leave it on your favorite frequency. Now, the way you tune one of these things, tune for max noise, okay? There is a tuning aid that's available from DX Engineering. It's a little thing you clip on. You can also get that from Chameleon with the F-loop. And when that thing lights up while you're transmitting, you're in the right place, okay? Some of the simple ones you just tune till you hear the signal the strongest. So, lots of things you can do with that antenna. Now, since you have a balcony, MFJ makes a balcony antenna, which is a clip for the balcony, and you attach to that a uh, hamstick, which goes up at a 45 degree angle, and then there's a counterpoise wire, insulated, that you throw back in the house and kind of drag toward the front door. That will work also. Now, in a recent Ask Dave issue, I talked a little bit about the idea that uh, you're going to be spraying RF around yourself and your neighbors, okay? And uh, the p potential for interference is high. And so you'll end up wanting to start with pretty low power so that it won't create an issue with anybody else uh, near you. And you can consult the article uh, for a reference on where you can find the RF uh, calculator that will tell you uh, what the maximum distances are and so on. So there you have it. I hope that helps you get on the air. I know that mag loop antennas are dreadfully expensive. 
Uh, you might try that MFJ uh, balcony antenna. There are others out there. Now, MFJ uh, has recently decided to, to wrap it all up and sign it off. So it's going to be hard to get stuff from MFJ. But some of the dealers may still have some of the items. So you can call around to Ham Radio Outlet, DX Engineering, r and um, all these other places that handle ham radio type stuff. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.